Okay, so let's get started. Uh, thank you all for joining, uh, taking your time off um, Friday night uh, for a short time of fellowship and learning and spending time with God. Uh, Josh will be leading us in a time of worship. Josh, just go and say hi to people who are joining you. Hey, what's up? Hi. <laughs> yeah, over to you, buddy. All right. Cool. I think uh, if you can all just like close our eyes, um, just focus our attention on Jesus. Um, he's the only reason we're young. He's the only reason we're tuned in. Okay. And I call you answer, and you came to my rescue and I want to be where you are. I call, come on. And I call you answer. And you came to my rescue and I And I call you answer, and you came to my rescue, and I just wanna be there. My life be lifted I in harbor, be lifted I in our love, be lifted high. Come on, can we declare that over our lives? In my life. Lifted I in our be lifted I in our love, be lifted I. Come on, we sing in my life, in my life, be lifted I. Be lifted I love Be lifted I On this call on turn In I call You answer And you can Rescue and I wanna be there. You are. Just wanna be where you are. I just wanna be where your presence is.
Yes, you call me and you're home long. I am the temple. I am the temple. Lord, we pray that you use us. That you use us. With your name, make us holy, Lord. For you are holy, Lord. I am the temple. I am the temple. Lord, we pray that you use us, that you make us holy, because you are holy, Lord. We can't do it on our own strength. We can't do it in our own understanding. But we pray that you direct us, teach us to live open lives. That you refine us, Lord, and make us your temple. That we may be worthy for you to call us home. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Man, um, thanks, Josh. Um, uh, towards the end, maybe uh, you know, I'm going to ask you to sing that song with Fire as Fire once we are done, you know, with the discussion. So just be ready with that. Um, um, guys, uh, thank you once again for joining uh, our weekly youth meeting. So glad to see uh, some of the familiar people uh, joining in a while in for the first time or oh, some. After a long time, it's always wonderful to see you guys join. Thank you. Um, we've been doing. Okay. Zoom difficulties. Uh, we've been doing a series on character. We started this last week um, and we will be doing uh, this. We will be continuing the series for at least another three weeks or so. So last week, um, as one of the attributes of character, of being a man of character or a woman of character, we discussed on uh, honor, what honor is all about, um, you know, and what the Hebrew word stands for, what it means, and how God sees it. Uh, and just a quick recap, uh, honor from the Hebrew language simply means weight or to give weight to when God says, honor your parents, honor your mother and your father, it means, says, give weight to them. That means uh, it's one of the concepts or an analogy that we saw was if you're walking down the road and if there's like a huge missionary like crane or something, it's, it cannot be uh, ignored or neglected, right? Um, so that's what uh, honor in the kingdom is. Um, to honor every single person because they are all valuable. And so we saw four points to that. One is to honor yourself. Uh, learn to honor yourself because just like we sang right now, we are the temple uh, you know, of the Holy Ghost. Um, if you can honor yourself, you will honor uh, one another. Right? Uh, and understanding that we will learn what honor is to honor our parents. And then finally, we concluded with uh, discussing um, honoring authority. And, and how when you follow each of these steps, not steps, but how when you do each of this, you are honoring God and the way God honors back is not like um, any man. Um, so that's what we started off with, uh, you know, last, what, that's what we discussed last week. And today we'll uh, talk about purity. Yeah, uh, it's not another pop culture, you know, famous youth topic or whatnot is like boring your purity, okay? Uh, yeah, that's what, that's what we wanna hear on a Friday evening. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, I mean, let's just talk about it. But before we go ahead, uh, I wanna start off with, um, and if you don't have your Bibles handy, uh, I know you at least have your phones handy. Um, I hope you have the Bible app downloaded. Uh, and I'll share all the scriptures in the chat section. I am sorry, I do not, I have not prepared a PPT for today, uh, for tonight. Um, so the glory might be a little less. <laughs> but I want to start off with uh, this scripture, okay? Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 21. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 21. Uh, 
and I'm just going to read. says, if you keep yourself pure, you will be a special utensil. Another translation says, if you keep yourself pure, you will be uh, an honorable vessel. Uh, your life will be clean and you will be ready for the master to use you for every good work. Okay, let's read that one more time. If you keep yourself pure, you will be a special utensil for honorable use. Uh, your life will be clean and you will be ready for the master to use uh, you for every good work. Once again, it's like the song that we sang. We all want to be used by God, isn't it? Uh, you know, like ready to do your will, Lord, ready to do your will. Uh, we want to do your will. Um, but, but this is what the scripture is saying, you know, keep yourself pure. Okay, so I want to start off with that scripture and, uh, you know, Let's just dive into the first question to all of you is what comes to your mind when you think of purity? Okay. White, okay. Gold, interesting, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, children. Flawless, set apart, Jesus. All right. Holy, okay. Come on, guys. Who else? What comes to your mind when you uh, when you think of purity? Clean, okay. Clean. Thanks, Jim. Stephen, what do you think? Love, okay. Hello, all right. Righteous, awesome, awesome. Keep it coming, guys. Keep it coming. Okay. Keeping oneself from sin, okay. <laughs> Apple card. But there's an interesting word there. It's like two words, right? Aqua and guard. So, so remember the word guard as we continue to discuss. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for sharing that. Okay. So, I mean, all of these things comes to our head, right? Clean, Jesus, uh, pure. Um, what? What is holy? Set apart. Children. Uh, gold. <laughs> uh, love. Keeping oneself from sin. Okay. Righteous. Righteousness, yeah, um, thank you. Um, so the, the next question that I want to ask is, uh, what are some ways, uh, um, so when we discuss about purity, um, is there something more besides uh, sexual purity? Because I mean, as I was preparing for this topic uh, as an attribute for building character, um, when you talk of purity, it's very famously known for in, only in the context of sexual purity. People talk a lot about sexual purity, but then when I wanted to just share something, uh, something related to a character with us tonight, uh, I was thinking, man, there's definitely got to be something deeper, uh, you know, than just sexual purity, right? Um, integrity of thought, integrity, yeah. Purity and resources need to be good stewards. Judah sending it to me. Okay. Action and thoughts. Okay. Thanks, Alice. Thank you. Anything else, guys?
Yeah, what are some ways we need to be pure besides sexually? Yeah, heart and mind purity, okay. Intentions. Yep. A clear conscience and an obedient heart. Yeah, okay, uh, so we've received all correct answers. I think youth meeting is over, you know, you know. <laughs> Uh, monetary dealings, right? Money. Wow. Purity in mind and spirit. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, so yeah, let's move on. So uh, the next scripture that I want us to look at is uh, Psalm 24, verse three and four. By the way, I will be sharing uh, the Word document that I put together with all of you uh, in some of the youth groups and towards the end of the call. I'll also share my phone number. If you are not part of any of the youth groups, uh, you can feel free to message me and I'll send you my notes. Everything that we're gonna be discussing tonight, I'll put it in the chat section. I will also send you the notes for it. Okay, so uh, here's what uh, Psalm 24 verse three and four says, okay. Who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? It's talking about the tabernacle, the temple, which was placed in a high hill. Okay, verse four says, the one who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not trust in an idol or swear by false God. Okay, so look at that. The one who has clean hands and a pure heart. Um, okay, so hands, clean hands represent deeds, uh, works, you know, righteousness, like Benjamin's, uh, you know, mentioned. Uh, uh, hands that work righteousness, uh, hands that abstain from sin, uh, hands that do good things and not evil things. Okay, so clean hands is related to your works, to your ways, to your deeds, to your physical living. Okay, and everything that we've discussed, right? But then pure heart, the one who has clean hands and a pure heart. Now that represents our inner man, our inner world, our thoughts, you know, our intentions, our emotions, our desires, uh, you know. So, so basically pure hearts refers to the purity of your inner being, okay? Uh, before something, becomes an action, it starts with a thought, isn't it? And so that's why we see in Matthew chapter 24, sorry, Matthew 12, 34, says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, okay? One of the actions, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, it could be anything, okay? Um, another scripture says in Proverbs chapter four, verse 23, it says, guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. Man. Okay, if you're, if you're somewhere, you know, in your life, don't know where to go, what to do, what's my next step, you don't know what the plan is, uh, what God's will is, um, well, you can start off by guarding your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. Okay, you guard it, isn't it? Uh, I mean, just think about that this word. Um, we use it so often and we just don't really think about it. What do you guard? We guard our children. We protect our children. We, we guard the weak, isn't it? Uh, you know, when we go out with the uh, women, when you guard them, if something danger was to happen to them, right? Uh, we have security guards uh, who, you know, stop people before they, they let us let them in. They check who they are and are they genuine and whatnot, right? So guard your heart above all as uh, Proverbs 24, 20, uh, 423 says. Um, there was this an, another uh, just powerful scripture, uh, you know, this stood out in Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 30. It says, what a sick heart you have, says the sovereign Lord, to do such things as these, acting like a shameless prostitute, Again, not a very famous verse for a youth meeting on a Friday night, isn't it? <laughs> what a sick heart you have, says the sovereign Lord, to do such things, actions. You see how the actions are just an overflow of the heart, acting like a shameless prostitute. The just words are just powerful there. Uh, some more scriptures. I hope you don't get tired because there are going to be a lot of scriptures tonight. Okay, I hope that's okay with you. Uh, so Luke 6.45 
it says, a good person produces good things from the treasury of a good heart. Okay, and an evil person produces evil things from the treasury of an evil heart. What you say flows from what is in your heart. What you say flows from what is in your heart. Okay. Um, so basically, okay, there's an one more scripture, but then I'll just, you know, just move on. Let's just start by understanding this. Purity is not that, it's not something that makes something look bad. But when purity shows up, it exposes. Mm. Okay, purity is not something that makes uh, something look bad, but it, it, it's like, you know, I don't know, take a, let's say take two t-shirts, two, you know, white t-shirts. Okay, we all remember Ujala ads, no? <laughs> okay, how many of you remember Ujala ads? Okay, this is two shirts, you know, and then one thing goes, whoosh. oh, I think that's tied ad, okay. Um, but yeah, you, you get the picture, isn't it? You don't know uh, that it's, clean until something that's cleaner comes in, you know, and stands in, beside, in comparison. Okay, so that's what purity does. Okay, so, um, um, so where I wanted to start is from, you know, I wanted to just go deeper and see what the kingdom really had to say about purity. What did Jesus have to say about purity, right? Um, more than just talk about sexual purity or whatnot. Um, in the kingdom, purity of heart simply meant singleness of the heart. Okay, I'll say that again. In the kingdom, purity of the heart simply meant singleness of the heart. Okay, uh, let's just, uh, I start off by with this scripture with Matthew chapter 5, verse 8. It says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. In Psalm 24, verse 3, it says, uh, who may ascend to the hill of the Lord, because that's where the sanctuary, the temple, the tabernacle was mounted, was placed. And who could go in and encounter God? And who could go and see God face to face there? Clean hands and pure heart. And then you see Jesus saying that, blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Okay, so like I said, in the kingdom, to see simply means um, focus. Okay. In the kingdom, to see simply means uh, focus. In um, in John chapter five verse nineteen. You know what? I'll just go ahead and share my document so that you know you're like, geez, Roshan, you should have done that in the beginning. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Here we go. No, I don't have to keep just typing. But then just, yeah, just uh, have, make sure you have your Bibles with you. Um, so, yeah, to see in the kingdom simply means to focus, okay? Just like how uh, our spectacles, our glasses helps us, like what our eyes do, right? It helps us to focus on one thing. The second or the minute or the day, you know, you figure out something's wrong with your eye, with your vision. Uh, you go to a doctor, get it checked, and then he gives a lens. And that all it does is, is to help you in focusing to see things clearly, okay? So that's what it means in the kingdom. To see God simply means to focus clearly, okay? And John 5, 19 says that, I only do what I see the Father doing. Jesus had like just one mission, one thing, you know? He only did what he saw the Father do. So it simply means singular focus, single mission, single race, single devotion. Uh, okay, so let's get more deeper into that. Um, in your Bibles, let's look at Matthew chapter 6, verse 19 to 22. From 22, uh, and I've just given different versions of the scripture. Um, so, yeah, it says, don't store up treasures here on earth where moths eat them and rust destroys them and where thieves break in and steal. Store your treasures in heaven where moths and rust cannot destroy and thieves do not break in and steal. Wherever your treasure is, 
there the desires of your heart will also be. Okay, check that line out. Where your treasure is, that is where your heart will always be, okay? Uh, in different translation, verse 22, it says, your eye is like a lamp that provides light for your body. When your eye is healthy, okay, and you see other translation use different words there. In the Amplified Bible, it says, if your eye is clear, and the ASV version and the KJV, it says, if your eye is single, okay, single focus, okay, you see that? And if your eye is good, and I like this, the Passion Translation, it says, uh, is replacing heart and saying, if your heart is unclouded, okay? Um, so I hope, you, I hope you guys are with me, uh, you know, following what uh, you know what's happening um, so I if your eye is clear if it's healthy if it's single if it's fixed on one mission on the one thing and that is Jesus like just like what Jesus did um, you know you will be able to you will see God and the word good here okay in the Greek you can go and uh, you know just look it up uh, later it, there are two words to it one is the alpha and the other word used there is voyage okay alpha and a voyage so basically what it's saying is that in your journey of life in your voyage you need to have just that one single focus and that is god yeah amen um i like war movies uh you know not uh not the, the moral issues that, you know, that took place that happened, the cruelty of it. Uh, but just to know, I mean, man, that's my history. That's the human history, you know. Um, and I like snipers. Uh, like, there are certain missions a scout sniper will endure, will go through, that for them to just travel 500 meters, just go from 500 meters, Right. It will take them days, if not weeks, that, you know, they will just walk, crawl with sometimes, you know, a lot of plant life on them. Uh, you know, they will not have time uh, to pee and whatnot. They just cannot leave their spot and let the enemy track them. Sometimes when they are crawling, snakes might come up, insects and whatnot. The weather, it will be raining heavy. It will be, you know, very sunny or very hot, um, but they will just not move. They will be fixed on their mission until they, until they accomplish it, okay? Um, so yeah, I mean, this is one of the things you know, that I wanted to add about a sniper, something that we can learn from them. And in all of these scriptures, especially, you know, we read in Matthew chapter 16, verse 22, if we see one thing that's plaguing our generation and destroying our walk with God, is dualism or multi-focus, a divided heart, in other words. One thing that is destroying a purity walk in our lives, not just young people, uh, but people of every age is dualism, a divided heart. Okay, I just put together some of the lines here. I really love God, but I love this too. Okay, I really want to serve the Lord, but I want to serve a bunch of other idols I've made up for myself too. I want your will to be done, but I also want my will to be done, Lord. Yeah, I'm not, those are all lines that I have used in my life, okay, by the way. Uh, I really want to follow you, Jesus, but I'm going to lead my own life. We cannot say our heart is in heaven while serving everything earthly simply what jesus said you simply cannot serve two masters you need to have that single vision that single focus that leads to purity when you fix your gaze on jesus in in psalm 86 verse 11 says give me an undivided heart that i may fear your name david prays give me an undivided heart that I may fear 
your name. So what does it mean? So the more our hearts are divided in our focus and our desires, the less the fear of the Lord is in our hearts. Okay, take a look at that line one more time. The more our hearts are divided in our focus and in our desires, the less the fear of the Lord is in our hearts. Um, I'm going to pronounce this name wrong, so I'm not going to even try pronouncing his name. But that dude says, purity of heart is to will one thing. Purity of the heart is to will one thing. And then, you know, we see the famous prayer that David makes once again in Psalm 27 verse 4. He says, one thing have I desired of the Lord that I will seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord for all the days of my life. I mean, the one thing, one vision, single vision, that is all I have. I have eyes for only you. Um, I'm just reminded of the song. Uh, I just put it in the chat section. You can listen to it later uh, by Misty Edwards. Um, it's called Eyes Ice for Eyes for only you. Okay, you can check that out when you can. But let's just move on. James chapter 3 verse 11 says, salt water and fresh water cannot come from the same source. Uh, James is one of those books uh, where you want to go and have a reality check of your character, of your integrity and everything about your life. Uh, right? And then further down when you go uh, you know, to the next chapter, James again says in four, uh, chapter four, verse eight, come near to God and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded, divided heart. Okay, um, I want God, I want the world also. It just doesn't work, guys, okay? Ephesians chapter 6 verse 5 says, Servants, be obedient unto them that according to the flesh are your masters with fear and trembling in singleness of your heart as unto Christ. Um, I'm just, just throwing a bunch of scriptures at us uh, because there's really nothing much that I want to share, uh, but everything what the Bible actually says. All right? In Song of Songs chapter 5 verse 2, it says, I slept, but my heart was awake. Okay, I slept, but my heart was awake. Um, and what is he referring to Solomon there? And if you go to First Kings chapter three, and we're not gonna read that chapter now. And you see, that's the famous passage where God speaks to Solomon in his dream. Okay. Here, okay, God speaks to Solomon in his dream, and we all what, what's interesting is that in that passage we see Solomon also conversing back with God. And so, what is he saying? You know, you've made me king, but I am just a child. Give me wisdom and understanding that I may rule your people well. He is so focused, even in his sleep. Even in his sleep, his, his mind and his one thing was to rule well, to do justice to how his, his father David left the throne. And God speaks to him in his dream. Right? Um, so, as in conclusion, really, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12 says, Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in life, in love, in faith and in purity. Um, and in your, in your quiet time, uh, when, you're, you know, when you're just spending time alone with God, just make, make a note of this question and you know, ask yourself, uh, what are some of the practical ways that you can be example to believers in purity? And 1 John 1, 9 says, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Psalm 51 verse 10, again, David cries out, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew right spirit 
within me. Create in me a clean heart, a clear heart, an unclouded heart. Give me a single heart that I may not be divided. And having this, just, just go ahead and stop this. And um, Josh, if you're ready. Um, so uh, young people, uh, whoever is joining, um, I just want us to encourage us. A living a life of purity is not only about sexual purity. It's not just about being morally right, doing the act, doing all the moral acts the right way. But before the acts, before your deeds, it starts with your thought, with your heart. Everything that you do flow is an, out, is an overflow of your heart. Um, so let's pray tonight. And, I, and as I was preparing, uh, it was very strange, but I felt like I had to give an altar call. You don't have to raise your hands. You don't have to turn your camera on. Wherever you are, okay, um, God is seeing you. He knows what is the condition of your heart is. Would you just lift up your heart to him tonight and tell him, Lord, give me an undivided heart. That all my devotion, all my affection will only be for you. That my eyes will only behold you, Lord. As David cries out, one thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek. Holy Spirit, help us to open our eyes and see that one thing, and that is you, Lord, and that you are worthy. Josh, would you just lead us, please?
Lord, you're ready to If that is, that your, is your prayer, prayer tonight, tonight. Um, why, don't why don't you just, you just go, go ahead and offer up, up your heart, heart one, one more time and say, and say Jesus, Jesus, for far, for far too long, long my heart's, my heart's been, been divided. divided. For far too long, my heart's been divided. I want to give it back to you right now. I make it all about you, Lord. Amen. 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 Um, Thank you, thank you once again for joining. Uh, I hope this was a blessing. Uh, if you want the notes, if you're not part of uh, any of the youth groups, uh, please message me on that number. I'll uh, send you the notes. Um, for everybody else, I'll be sharing the notes on our youth groups. Okay, um, so let's just walk, continue to ask the Holy Spirit to teach us to walk in honor and in purity as he builds us to become men and women of um, character. Amen. In conclusion, I want us to remind that line, anointing will take us up, but it is your character that will keep you up there. Okay. Uh, so remember that. God bless you guys. Uh, good night. You guys take care. Have a lovely weekend. Bye-bye.